everyone, this is Divya here and welcome to String Diary. I hope you're having an amazing day. So today we're going to learn how to make the linen stitch or the moth stitch. Uh, this stitch is one of the most basic stitches that you can use in uh, any project and it requires the knowledge of only chains and single crochet stitches. So let's see how, what we're going to use for this tutorial right now. So before we begin, I'd like to show you a swatch that I've already made with the linen stitch. And if you can see, it's it gives you a very beautiful textured look, uh, almost like a woven look, uh, you know, with the alternate uh, single crochets and the horizontal bars of the skipped single crochet. So that's how it looks. This is uh, the shaded eight ply yarn. So if you see, it's a reversible stitch and both the front and the back side look exactly the same so there is no right and wrong side in this stitch so for this tutorial i am using a six ply uh, light worsted weight yarn with a 6mm hook uh, you'll need a pair of scissors and a stitch marker for better cl clarity right so uh, this uh, you can use this stitch for any uh, kind of yarn right from lace weight all the way till worsted weight or even bulky weight yarn but for the tutorial I'm using a six ply weight yarn right so I'm gonna start with a slip knot and uh, this uh, linen or moss stitch can be worked on any odd number of stitches right so if you have any odd number of stitches as your base you can continue with those stitches at, to make the linen stitch or if you're starting afresh, you need to make a base of odd number of chains, right? So right now for this tutorial, I'm going to make 15 chains and I'll meet you at the end of that. So now that I have made uh, 15 uh, chains, uh, that's your required odd number of stitches. I will make one more chain to start the next row. Now this chain is considered for the height of the single crochet and not counted as a stitch, right? So you've got to remember that whenever you're starting, you need to make odd number of stitches. And if you're making chains, you make an extra ch one chain more for the height of the stitch. So when you start the new row, we're going to chain one for the height. And in the second chain from the hook, we will make one single crochet right now that is the start of your repeat so the repeat is going to be single crochet chain one skip the next stitch and repeat so that's single crochet again so we're going to skip the next stitch and chain one in the next so i am currently i have turned my work and i'm working in the back bumps of the chain you could also work into the chains if required. I just feel that if you work in the back bumps of the chain, it gives you a cleaner edge at the bottom, right? So that's going to be your repeat chain, single crochet, chain one, skip one stitch and single crochet in the next, right? So let's go through that again. Single crochet, chain one, skip one and continue repeating, right? So now we've done a single crochet here, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. So that's the repeat for your row one and you keep continuing that till you reach the end. So I'm going to finish all of these stitches and meet you at the last stitch of this row. So now that I have reached the end of this row, I have done the single crochet and I have two stitches remaining. So I'm going to chain one skip the second last stitch and in the last stitch I'm going to make one single crochet right so there you finish your first row for the linen stitch let's begin with the second row now for the second row uh, I'm going to chain one and turn the work right and now we're going to follow the chain the single crochet and the chain one spaces for our stitches right 
So in the first stitch for the row 2, it will always be single crochet on top of the single crochet. Right? So your edge remains constant. Now in the chain space, you can see the chain space. In the chain space, we will make one single crochet. We will re do the same repeat as we did for row 1. That is single crochet, chain 1, skip 1 and single crochet. So now you got to remember that in this row, we will be working only in the sing chain space of the previous row. So we'll be making single crochets only in the chain space and the single crochet stitch from the previous row is what we will be skipping as one stitch, right? So we're gonna single crochet, chain one, we're skipping that stitch and in the chain space, we go into the chain space and single crochet again. So the repeat remains the same. It's just that instead of the stitch, you're working inside the chain space of the previous row. Right? So single crochet, chain one, skip one and repeat again. Right? That's your repeat throughout and that's your row number 2. Right? So now in the end, now that I've reached the end, I have done, there was a last chain space, I've done the single crochet in the last chain space and now there is one last single crochet that is left. So I will just go and single crochet on top of that previous stitch and complete this row. Now if you see in the previous row, in the row one of the linen stitch, we had an equal amount of single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one space, right? However, in row two, you will see that we have two single crochets at the start and then we have the chain space, single crochet, chain space, single crochet and we end again with two single crochets together, like next to each other, right? So now that you've completed this, we'll go back and I'll show you the row one again. So chain one and turn your work. We're going to single crochet in the first stitch. Chain one and single crochet in the chain space. Skip one stitch and single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip one single crochet in the chain space and continue doing that now when you are doing so you see that there is a difference between row 1 and row 2 of the linen stitch you have the row 1 which directly starts with the single crochet chain 1 space um, whereas in row 2 you're starting with two single crochets and then the chain space so now that you've finished the row one it'll be easier if you mark row one and keep it for your reference so whenever you are doing a repeat of the row one you shift the stitch marker so that you know what row you are on now if you don't do this what happens is that you will end up making row 1 on row 2 like now for the row 2 I'm making one single crochet and then I have a chain space right so I have to go into the chain space and make one more single crochet so I have two single crochets at the beginning and then I'll continue with the repeat of chain 1 skip 1 single crochet in the chain space chain 1 skip 1 single crochet in the chain space right so if you do not uh, continue with the row number that's specific, like if you're doing, if you end up doing row one on a row two line, what will happen is you will increase your stitches and you don't want to be doing that. So for clarity and better understanding, it is always better to mark your row one repeat and then once you do your next row one repeat, shift the stitch marker to that row. So you always know what uh, row you are working on. Now if you see we've done two repeats, two full repeats. 
that is of row 1 and row 2, row 1 and row 2 again. Now if you clearly see the stitches, you can see that this is a very, it's an alternative uh, single crochet kind of a texture and it gives you a very beautiful woven uh, texture using this stitch, right? So I'm going to continue a few more rows, make sure that I keep changing the, shifting the stitch marker at every row one repeat and I'll meet you once I've completed a nice square so that you can see the texture a bit more and you can understand the stitch more clearly. So now you see I have completed a couple of rows and I have ended it with a repeat of row 2. If you see my stitch marker is on the row 1 repeat. And uh, now you can see the texture of the yarn uh, of the stitch a little more clearly. You can clearly see the alternating single crochets and it gives like a beautiful woven texture. And you can see that horizontal line of the skip stitch. So it, it gives a very beautiful uh, look. Now if you use a thinner yarn and a larger hook and once you block what also happens if you see that the stitch opens up and it also will give you a very lace kind of an effect. If you want to see the stitch worked up uh, uh, in a design, you can check out my design for the Moringa wrap. I'll put the link of that pattern in the description box below. And uh, you can see how it opens up when we using a, a thinner yarn with a larger hook and it gives you a beautiful lacy kind of an effect. Contrary, if you're using a a thicker yarn with a smaller hook it will give you a more compact and a dense uh, texture and the versatility of this uh, stitch varies from project to project depending on the yarn and the hook size that you use right so if you love this tutorial please like the video share and subscribe to my channel for further uh, tutorials and yarn reviews and you can list down in the comments below of what do you want to see more from my channel. So thank you so much. Have a great day and see you next time.